mystery in general. Well, we have some idea what a mystery is. We say, oh, that's a mystery. Let me give you a, a pretty good definition of mystery in the context that we are speaking about this morning. A mystery is a divinely revealed truth whose very possibility cannot be rationally conceived before it is revealed and after revelation, whose inner essence cannot be fully understood by the finite mind. The incomprehensibility of revealed mysteries derives from the fact that they are manifestations of God, who is infinite and therefore beyond the complete grasp of a created finite intellect. Nevertheless, though incomprehensible, mysteries are intelligible. One of the primary duties of a believer is through prayer, study, and experience to grow in faith, to develop an understanding of what God has revealed. So, a mystery is something which, in advance, we couldn't have conceived it, of it purely through our rational thought process. For instance, before the revelation of God as Trinity, that's not something that was accessible to human thinking alone. That's something God revealed to us. The truth of the Immaculate Conception, the perpetual virginity of Mary, Mary as Mother of God, the assumption of Mary into heaven, body, and soul, the Eucharist as the sacrifice of Calvary, the real presence of Jesus, the fact that he's really, truly, and substantially present under the appearances of bread and wine. These are all mysteries. These are all mysteries that God has to reveal to us. We just can't think those up. We couldn't know those without God revealing them to us and helping us to understand that this is part of his truth. Now, our faith, obviously, is a mystery. It's filled with mystery. I remember when I was studying in Spain for my doctorate in theology, we had an entire course, and I believe it might have been, I'm not, I don't remember, it was at least one semester, it might have been a whole year on mystery. An entire three or maybe six credits at the university on the doctoral level on mystery. It's very important. If we understand that our faith is basically rooted in the mystery who is God, then we won't wonder at some of the truths which God has revealed. Now, there are two poles here. Yes, it is a mystery we will never understand totally, this mystery which is God himself. But that's not an excuse not to use our mind to seek to understand better. That's what we're doing here. We're not wasting our time, I hope. We're seeking to understand better that which we believe. And it's not wrong to ask questions. It's not wrong to say, well, I want to understand that better. Just don't doubt it. I'll tell you one of the surest ways to never understand anything is to doubt and say, I don't believe that. You'll never be given understanding if you say, oh, that's impossible. She couldn't have been a virgin. She couldn't be without sin. Jesus couldn't be there in bread. Well, you begin to doubt the truth of these revealed mysteries, and it's like shutting the door and blocking out the light. Rather say, I believe. I believe. I don't understand, though, Lord, help my lack of understanding. And that's how we proceed in learning our faith. That's one of the basic axioms in theology. Faith precedes understanding. And the fact that this is mystery will go a long way towards helping us to understand what we first believe. It's not amazing, some of these things. You know, I, I alluded to it before. Why should it be hard to believe? It may be hard to understand, but why should it be hard to believe that God would have preserved his own mother free from sin? Why should it be hard to believe he would preserve her virginal integrity? I, it's a blessing. Faith is a gift, true. 
But, you know, don't be confused between faith and understanding. Faith and understanding are perfectly compatible. Let me tell you what the problem is, though. Our reason often quickly becomes unreasonable. That's the problem. There's nothing wrong with faith. God is pure intelligibility, St. Thomas Aquinas said. God is pure light. He's truth. Pure intelligibility. But then he added, but not to us. In himself, he is. He's pure light. He's, he's truth. He's light itself. There's no, what part has the darkness and the light, Scripture says. God's pure light. But our finite eyes, are, they're not sufficiently capacitated for pure light. You know how it is if you've been in the dark for a long time, and then you come into the light, you can't see. It blinds you. Well, we're not in darkness. We've come out into God's own marvelous light. But the light is so bright, so perfect, pure intelligibility, that our finite mind, our rational and spiritual eyes, if you will, don't have sufficient capacity to see everything all at once. And so that's the reason that our understanding, our reason, kind of struggles with these things. But give the assent of faith, the obedience of faith, and God will increase your understanding. He'll give you eyes to see and ears to hear his beautiful truth. Christ's whole life is a mystery. The entire life and mission of the Lord Jesus Christ is a mystery. What is written in the Gospels was set down there so that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name, the Gospel of St. John says. So Jesus' entire life and, miss and mission is a great mystery, and we seek to delve into that mystery. Not only that, we are part of that mystery. Our own life is part of the mystery of the life and mission of Jesus Christ. Why? Because through baptism we're grafted into him. We can say with St. Paul, it is no longer I who live, although I still live my human life, but Christ who lives within me, we live, and we move, and we have our being in him. And he and his mission, that's a mystery. And so our life, too, in Christ is a mystery. But the mystery unfolds. We try to understand all the more each, with each passing day. This mystery that is Jesus is very sacramental in nature. The quintessential absolute sacrament is Jesus Christ. Now, I'm going to give you a quick refresher in sacramental theology. We know that a, a sacrament is a sense-perceptible sign which affects what it signifies. What does that mean? Quite simply, it's a sense-perceptible sign. That means we can perceive it with the senses. See, touch, hear, baptism the sense perceptible sign, the pouring of water, or the immersion in water. That's the sense perceptible sign. It affects what it signifies. What does it signify? It, it signifies washing, that's what water does, washing, and regeneration. But it not just signifies it, it affects it spiritually. So we see part of it, and we don't see part of it. We see the sign. And that sign makes happen what it signifies. We're washed clean from original sin or personal sin if we're adults when we're baptized. So Jesus, we could see him. The word became flesh. We could see the flesh. He walked on this earth 2,000 years ago. The sense perceptible sign, the humanity of Christ, that which is unseen, the divinity of Christ. He came as a savior. He effected what he signified. His very name, Jesus, God saves. His very name indicates what he is. And so Jesus, his whole life and his mission is sacramental. 